Recent changes to how we can use products containing 2,4-D have been put in place. These will either appear in an APVMA approved permit or more recently you may see some manufacturers have labels that are already approved with these changes in them. Um, many of these changes have come about as a result of a lot of off-target movement of product, so damage from spray drift, um, particularly in areas where summer crops are grown like cotton, grapes, horticulture. And so the APVMA have responded with some changes that are designed to help mitigate that risk. One of the first things you'll see on the label is a change in the required droplet size. So there's actually a mandatory requirement to use a very coarse spray quality and that's all year round. And there's also an advisory statement in areas where there's sensitive crops um, between October and April 15 over summer to use either an extremely coarse or a, um, ultra coarse. So for many operators that means that the traditional nozzles they're currently using, which may only produce a standard coarse spray quality, will no longer be legal. They need to make a change to something and produce something bigger like this TTI which actually produced an extremely coarse. Some of the other changes that have occurred in the new labels apart from the droplet size are things like mandatory no spray zones and this is a downwind buffer so when the wind is blowing towards something sensitive there's a distance you have to stay away uh, or not spray. Now typically these are less than 50 metres for most uh, rates that we'd use so they're not necessarily intrusive but they need to be followed and checked on the label depending on the rate of product you're using. Um, and how many grams active that product has in it. Other changes that are included in the 2,4-D label, there's a minor change to the record keeping, so you have to record the height of the boom is when you're spraying, as well as all the other weather conditions, wind speed, direction, temperature, humidity, at the site of application, as well as the nozzle pressure and things like that, and the operator, so the standard things you'd normally record. The other things that you'll probably notice on that label, apart from droplet size and mandatory buffers, much clearer, um, definitions of what constitutes a, an inversion or a temperature, surface temperature inversion which on the label it says you cannot spray under. We'll be talking this series of videos about some of these aspects of uh, using larger droplets so how to maintain efficacy when you're using much coarser nozzles but also talking around some of the constraints of weather and understanding that trade-off between temperature, humidity and um, inversion conditions which typically occur at night.